Today, we're diving into the bizarre world of NBA superstitions, where logic takes a back seat and sanity is left dribbling at half court. From Kawhi Leonard using the women's restroom to Jason Terry wearing other people's clothes, these aren't just pre-game jitters. They're full-blown ritualistic dances with the basketball gods. So buckle up, folks. We're about to explore the NBA's quirkiest superstitions. Five, the straw chewer. In the grand bizarre universe of NBA quirks, Karan Butler's straw chewing saga is like a hidden Easter egg that's both delightfully weird and slightly concerning. This isn't just a player with a love for hydration accessories. It's a full-blown straw munching odyssey. Butler wasn't just nibbling. He was going through straws like a starved goat in a paper factory. We're talking about a man who chewed around 12 straws per game. Do the math, and that's over 900 straws a season, an environmental hazard in its own right. But before we continue, make sure to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Let's contrast this with other, more normal athlete habits. LeBron's pregame chalk toss, a mere spectacle. Michael Jordan sticking his tongue out, child's play. Butler chewing straws, that's the real hardcore stuff. It's like comparing a hobbyist playing with Legos to someone building the Eiffel Tower out of them. Same pieces, wildly different scale. The NBA, in its infinite wisdom, eventually banned straw chewing. Yes, a league that sees players flying through the air like gravity-defying superheroes decided that straws were the real danger. It's akin to telling Thor he can't use his hammer because it might chip the paint on the court. Butler's reaction? probably akin to someone taking away your favorite snack. A mix of disbelief and the kind of mild irritation you feel when your phone charger doesn't quite reach your bed. 4. Rajon Rondo's Shower Routine Rondo stands out as one of the top point guards in the league over the past two decades, but his game day rituals are uniquely eccentric. He indulges in five showers on game days, with the final one precisely 45 minutes before tip-off, as he believes his best ideas come to him in the water. This habit poses a challenge, given his germophobia and aversion to being barefoot, leading him to stock three or four pairs of shower shoes in his locker. Rondo openly admits to being a little OCD about his routines. During the drive to the arena, he downs five bottles of water to avoid the hassle of using Gatorade cups on the bench, and he keeps a tube of Carmex in his sock to ensure his lips stay hydrated. Carmex sends him countless refills before each season, as many teammates also request some and Rondo obligingly dispenses it on their fingertips. Despite his exceptional passing skills, Rondo has transitioned into a role player in recent years. It's common for athletes to have their own game day rituals to get in the zone, but they typically involve listening to specific music or eating a particular type of food. But five showers a day? In this economy, that just sounds wasteful. Also, how can you be a germaphobe in the NBA, where you literally trade spit and body fluids with 11 other guys for three hours? 3. Monta Ellis's Hot Wax Monta Ellis elevated the idea of warming up to an entirely new level. This unique warm-up ritual was spotlighted on the NBA YouTube channel in a 2011 video clip, where Monta Ellis immersed his hands into a wax apparatus and remarked, If you're trying, it ain't gonna work for you. This is my magic, only for me to do. I'm gonna warm my hands up. The natural question that emerges is the source of such an unusual habit. Ellis himself explored the origins of this practice in the video, explaining, Four years ago, I had a torn ligament in my left ring finger. Ever since i just been doing this, it became a habit. Therefore, this practice had its beginnings out of necessity, primarily serving as a way to assist in his recovery from a finger injury. Similar to the rituals of other players, it became an integral part of his routine throughout his career, perhaps even more peculiar than some. Nevertheless, Ellis's regimen may have played a role in his success. Interestingly, it's not widely known that Eddie Curry followed a nearly identical pregame ritual. Instead of using hot wax, Curry would dip his hands in melted milk chocolate, coat them with a bowl of M&Ms, and then top it off with whipped cream. He did have a successful 11-year career in the NBA, so maybe he was onto something. 2. Jason Terry's Shorts in the bizarre world of sports superstitions, Jason Terry's pregame ritual stands out. Wearing the shorts of his next opponents the night before a game, Jason Terry's superstition wasn't just quirky, it was like a secret weapon hidden in plain sight. Think about it, who needs strategic game plans when you can just sleep in your opponent's shorts and call it a night? It's like psychological warfare, but comfier. While some players rely on talent or grueling practice sessions, 
Terry added a twist to his prep routine. This man averaged a cool 15 points per game over his career, but let's be real, it was probably those shorts whispering sweet strategies in his sleep. Comparing this to Michael Jordan's famous North Carolina shorts under his Bulls gear, Terry's approach was less about personal comfort and more like a cheeky nod to his opponents, saying, I've got you wrapped around my, well, you know. 1. Kaywee Leonard in the women's restroom Recent information reveals that the pre-game preparations of the Los Angeles Clippers forward frequently resulted in discomfort within the team. Leonard's pre-game activities, for which the training staff accommodated by setting up a secluded area, typically lasted between 20 to 45 minutes. This area was occasionally the female staff's locker room, especially during away games or before doubleheaders at the Staples Center, when the Los Angeles Kings locker room was unavailable. The situation was known to many within the Clippers, including players, coaches, and other staff members, and it caused some unease. Although there was no evidence of intentional sexism, the fact that female staff members were restricted from their locker room for personal use while Leonard prepared was noticeable and problematic. This issue was quietly raised by at least one player and one staffer, but there was a reluctance to make a big issue of it to avoid seeming confrontational towards Leonard, a key figure in the team. A league source commented on the dilemma, what could they really do? We're talking about a franchise player here. He has all the leverage. Though never confirmed what Leonard did in his private space, we're left to wonder, what the hell did he need the women's locker room for? Well, folks, that's all for now. Did we miss any weird rituals? Let us know in the comments and remember to like and subscribe for more NBA content.